Good morning. Good morning. Oh. Good morning. Welcome to Mountain Tim Creek Christian Fellowship. Not sure if uh, you're all on yet. Um, okay, but we're here. My name is Daryl Davis Bell, and I am standing in for my wife, uh, Deborah, this morning, uh, who is away. And, um, and so we're glad to be here. I appreciate the opportunity for, to be able to share with you this morning. Um, we're going to um, just give people a couple minutes to come on, and, um, and then uh, we'll begin service um, by praying together. Um, so appreciate your prayers for me. Um, it's actually my first time actually um, doing a, a live uh, sermon via um, Facebook, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's good to be here. Good morning. Welcome everyone. Glad you're all coming out to, to worship with us um, at Mountain Creek Christian Fellowship. It's a beautiful day that the Lord has made. I see the sun peeking out through the clouds and and the sun's always shining. Um, sometimes it's obstructed by clouds uh, and darkness, but thank God that his light shines in our heart regardless of what we may be going through in life. And so uh, thank you for being here. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your awesome goodness. Thank you for blessing us to see another day. God, we're so grateful to you because when we uh, put our legs on the side of the bed, our feet hit the ground and we have life today. You've given us, woke us up with a, with a reasonable uh, sound mind and our health and strength. And we thank you for that, oh God. Just be with us today, God, as we uh, come together to worship you to hear a word from you and to allow you, oh God, uh, to have your way in our lives. So speak to us today, God. We'll be careful to praise you and to adhere to, adhere to those things that you are saying to us. Bless everyone on the sound of my voice. Amen. Today, I'm gonna talk just um, a little bit about dual citizenship dual citizenship. For the most part, citizenship is something that is granted at birth. Uh, but there are occasions when individuals petition citizenship in a country outside of their native home. And when such a petition is granted, a person can uh, be considered as having dual citizenship. I, I think there may be people that have uh, tri uh, citizenship. There may be, um, I, I might add, at least nine countries that don't allow dual citizenship. At least uh, uh, one is Japan. Um, and a person must make a decision, I believe, by the age of 22 to 23, on uh, which country of loyalty they have to choose their citizenship. Uh, to the country that they decide to be loyal to. Now, for our purposes here today, I'm referring to dual citizenship as it relates to the followers of Christ being citizens of this earth and of the kingdom of God. Now, the idea that the, that, uh, the United States is a Christian nation and as such synonymous with the kingdom of God is a misnomer. Kingdom of God citizenship does not align with an earthly nation nor any political party. And when it comes to allegiance, regardless of one's earthly station, it is important to align with the right kingdom. 
Now, what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is a kingdom where God reigns, uh, and its citizens are made up of those that have been born into the kingdom through relationship with Christ. This is expressed well in the conversation Christ had with a Jewish, uh, Jewish uh, ruler named Nicodemus. And as the story is told in the book of John, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, John 3, 1 through 7, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can, can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, Unless one is born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The earthly birth is not enough. You need a spiritual birth to be a part of this kingdom. So we can clearly see from this passage of scripture that the kingdom is a spiritual realm over which uh, God reigns and where people have access uh, to Christ, uh, to the kingdom through Christ to be citizens of the kingdom or children of God. The scripture points out in John 1, uh, 1, 12, as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. Just a short piece of scripture, but let's pay attention as many as received him and those who believe in his name. Not those who say a sinner's prayer and then are immediately acclimated, but to those who receive Christ into their lives and believe in his name. And in this verse, name is synonymous with authority who believe means to uh, more than just believe with a head knowledge but to believe with your actions and your activities of daily living to believe means to submit to lean upon to trust in his name or in his authority his rulership and his lordship so we have access to the kingdom and as his children we are citizens of the kingdom of god there's this powerful song, I believe it can be called a hymn by, that I love, sung by the Gaither vocal band, titled Heaven Came Down. Its, its lyrics tell this story. Oh, what a, a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget. After I'd wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. He met the need of my heart. Shadows dispelling the joy I am telling. He made all the darkness depart. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross, the Savior made me whole. My sins were washed away. My night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Yeah. Born of the spirit with life from above into God's family divine, justified fully through Calvary's love. Oh, what a standing is mine. 
And the transaction so quickly was made when as a sinner, I came, took the offer of grace he did proffer. He saved me. Oh, praise his dear name. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross, the Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away. My night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross, the Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away. My night was turned to day. Heaven came down. Heaven came down. My sins were washed away. My night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. So beautiful. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Yes. The word became flesh and lived among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the one and only son that came from the father, full of grace and truth. I am a child of the king. I am a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. And if you've made that decision to follow Christ, then so are you. What are some of the characteristics, characteristics of these kingdom citizens? There's so much more that I could actually say regarding the kingdom of God, but for the sake of time, I just want to, to draw your attention to, to what is commonly called the Sermon on the Mount, also known as the B attitudes. In this sermon, Christ shares the attribute, attributes of kingdom citizens. Let's take a look at Matthew 5, verse 3 through 12. Christ says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Poor in spirit, the humble. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so, they uh, persecuted the prophets who were before you. Here, Christ is not suggesting, suggesting that we grab one or two of these attributes and make them our own, leaving the other attributes for, for others to obtain. He is saying that these characteristics will be present in the lives of those that call him king. Now, none of us comes into the kingdom of God being perfect. And this is why we need to study the kingdom handbook, as it is through the illumination of the Holy Spirit that we understand and learn to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Christ. When we look at these, uh, these being attitudes or beatitudes, it is easy to view them as a list of areas where we need to improve. However, I find it helpful when looking at uh, these uh, being attitudes to look at them as descriptive rather than prescriptive. In doing so, we'll notice that 
uh, that that the Beatitudes paint uh, for us a picture of Christ, just of who he is. He is humble. He is gentle. He is merciful. He is pure in heart. And he is the ultimate peacemaker. And as we are transformed into his likeness, we are becoming the people who hunger and thirst for righteousness. In that process, God is not looking for perfection as much as he is looking for a commitment to the process. Are you in? And he assures us because of our imperfections that if we sin, he said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Sometimes God has to speak to us in stern ways, like when we're on the edge of the cliff, because it's so easy for us to, to slip into our religious ways of thinking and believe for some reason that we're doing something miraculous for God. And in doing so, however, we neglect our relationship with God. In Matthew 23, verse, uh, verses 23 through 26, he warns the religious leaders of his day. Christ says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint, anise, and cumin, and have neglected the, the weightier matters of the law, justice mercy, and faithfulness. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel? Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the dish, cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisees first cleanse the inside of the cup and dish that the outside of them may be clean also. These so-called hypocrites were so far into a religious tradition that they had strayed away from their relationship with God. And the kingdom is not about having a, a big to-do list. Rather, it's more about learning to be. As the scripture says, in speaking about God with us, we are instructed in Psalms 46 and 10 to be still and know that I am God. Be. That's a hard task because we're so used to do. But be, be still. I have a difficult time with both of those, with being still. It speaks to a place of rest, a process of quieting the noise of our lives be still and know that I am God. Know in, in the Hebrew, in this uh, biblical sense, means does not mean uh, uh, an, uh, uh, a knowledge as, as we've learned it um, in, in the Greek sense, that something that we, we learn or something that we study, a head knowledge, but no, in this context means to experience or to be intimate with, with God. It speaks to a place of intimacy with God as we experience him without all of the background noise, noise that for the most part we create. It's in this noise of our lives that we feel the need 
uh, to mask up when we go into public. Some of us are used to doing that naturally. We feel the need to pretend and to act as if all is well with us, to act as if all is well between us and the Savior. Sadly, though, we, we may look good on the outside like these Pharisees, but inside we are miserable. The kingdom citizen should know that there is nothing to prove and nothing to lose. Why? Because he loves us just the way we are. And that's all the reason we need for just being and keeping it real. Not feeling the need to talk, but to be, to be still, to be still and know Emmanuel, God with us. What's this kingdom, kingdom mindset? Well, God says, uh, Romans says, uh, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The preoccupation of the kingdom citizen is clearly, clearly described in Matthew 6, 25 through 34. Christ says, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes uh, the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. Another way of saying nations. For all of these things, the Gentiles, the kingdoms of this earth, seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. So seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Seek the kingdom. Align yourself with the kingdom of God. And everything that you need will be added with you. If we prioritize our right relationship. If we walk in our standing as citizens of heaven, with our minds stayed on him, he will meet every of our needs according to his riches in glory by or through Christ Jesus. I heard someone sing a song. It said, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. 
as I conclude for today, just want you to know, we all need to know that it's okay to be where we are. Christ did not come to condemn us, but that, but to save us. It's okay to be where we are. Just admit it. It's pretty hard to repent and change if we're not honest about our need to. Where are you today? As we prepare now to take communion, this question provides the perfect opportunity for us to search ourselves. In 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight, 28, it encourages us along these lines, but let a person examine themselves and so let them eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Let's take a moment now just to be quiet and reflect. Then I will lead us in a prayer of repentance and bless our communion elements. I'm not sure if you've had time, but we will have communion together. Let's take a moment. Father, we thank you for your outstretched arms, how you receive us just as we are, broken, wounded, some sad. Father, we have sinned and we fall short of your glory. And this is the reason that you died, is to take upon the sins of the whole world. And so God, we ask now that you would forgive us of our sins and, to, and cleanse us for, from our unrighteous ways. Have mercy on us, God. We pray as we come to your table together, even virtually, that you would bless these elements Bless this cup, which represents your blood that was shed for the sins of many. Bless, bless this bread, oh God, which represents your body, which was broken for us. We thank you. Amen. For I received from the Lord that which also was delivered unto you. That the night the Lord Jesus was betrayed, after he had given thanks, he took the bread and he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, he took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do often as you drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. For as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us take the bread together. Let us partake the cup, drink all of it. Let us close with 
the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good to be with you. We're going to close uh, now. Uh, as we close, we will share some uh, some reminders um, in closing. Good to spend time with you. Just want to remind you to to go to the website. Uh, there you you'll find uh, the information that you may have missed in the announcements and. Remember there uh, at the website, you can, uh, you can um, enter your prayer requests, submit them. If you have a confidential uh, prayer re request, um, you can state such. Uh, this Wednesday, uh, uh, actually uh, past Wednesday, uh, March 3rd, uh, we began a new, uh, a new study um, titled All the Places to Go. How will you know? Um, also, don't want you to forget that after service today, uh, we will be going deeper. And if you're interested in going deeper with us, then just type in um, the comment section, send me link and we'll get the link to you. Um, uh, lastly, I want you to remember that Daylight Savings Time uh, is Saturday. And so remember to turn your clocks forward one hour. Look at that bouncing clock. Um, yes, and those of our those of our those are our announcements. And um, this was um, our time together today. Uh, we'll we'll end um, as I say a benediction over you. Um, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, be blessed. We'll see you next week.